Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Indie Game Test Drive. Today is November 18th, 2014, and we are about to take this war of mine out for a short spin. We shall kick the proverbial tires, or perhaps proverbial tank tracks as it were, and uh, see what she's got under the hood. But before we jump into the actual gameplay, let us get the nitty gritty out of the way. So this game is made by Polish company 11-Bit Studios. It just came out on Steam last Friday, so it's only been on Steam for a few days. Um, it's $20 US monies. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. It is also firmly entrenched in the top three sellers on Steam and has been since it came out. So that is quite telling. It's nice to see an indie game competing head-to-head -head against new games like Far Cry 4, uh, there's some Call of Duty on there. Uh, Assassin's Creed came out pretty recently, but uh, but, but but this War of Mine is right there. Not, not going to snot out of them, so that's great. Um, all right, let's jump into my game. I've got one already in progress. Well, I guess we'll take a look at the uh, the settings here. There really isn't very much to show you. That's about it. Um, now, we're going to go into my game that's already in progress. I'm not really sure exactly how well I'm doing, but I'll explain the game as we go. It's sort of a real-time uh, survival simulator there is a war. It's a civil war. Your nation has been ravaged by war. Oh, here we go. Here's uh, Katya. She's coming back from a night scavenging. Hi, I'm back. And in one piece, if a bit tired. Oh, and here we go. Now we get the report from the night while, while Katya was out. Because we control these survivors, you see. They're civilians surviving in this... In their Again, their country has been ravaged by war, so... Um, by day, you are in your shelter, and you craft and cook and do all sorts of things, uh, just trying to stay alive. And by night, you take one of your survivors out and attempt to do some scavenging to find supplies. So, I have just returned with Katya, and apparently we were attacked at night. So, the shell somebody came to our shelter, and someone tried to rob us. They were a tough and mean bunch, so they put up a fight and did some harm. We had some weapons, but not enough for everyone. Pavle and Bruno were wounded, and the attackers took a few things. We should put more people on guard. Things they stole. They took a can of food, which is... That's a crying shame, because food is very difficult to find. I just traded for that, and it cost me a lot. They took, uh, looks like a couple, some bullets, and even some fresh water. Okay, the biggest loss here is honestly the food, because that's tough to find. Uh, Katya had been searching for supplies and brought some interesting things back. So Katya brought these things back, so... Um, yeah, let's go take a look and see what we have. So Bruno apparently got slightly wounded in the attack. And I think that's everything. Yeah, okay. So now it is a real time. This portion is all real time. You can see the clock ticking down here. But I'm going to pause. Well, I'm not going to pause because you can't see anything. All right, we're just going to get going. Now, I haven't played this in a, in a couple of days, actually. So let me see where we stand. So essentially, this is your shelter. You've got three civilians. Um, each one of these civilians has... Um, a bio, and you can read the bio here, and you can learn about them. They're all just regular old people that uh, got trapped into the Civil War scenario, and now they're just trying to live day by day and make it through the day, make it through the night, and try to stay out of trouble, um, finding food and water and so forth and so on. So you can see that Pavle is a former athlete. He's a fast runner, so he does have this, uh, this little bit of a perk that might come in handy for scavenging, for example. And he's got um, sort of a, uh, you know, his diary here, what he's thinking in his head, and that might give you some clues as to how he's feeling and what, he, what his needs are. Bruno. Bruno is a good cook. Um, oh, they also have these status effects that are happening to them right now. So he's, he's hungry, slightly wounded, and sad. And then you can, um, you know, you want to manage their well-being by doing certain things based on, uh, based on those status effects. So we'll get to that in a second. But So Bruno owned a restaurant. He even had his own TV show. He's a great cook. So he does all the cooking for us. And we have Katya here who has great bargaining skills. So we do every now and then meet up with traders. Traders will come to our shelter and make some trades. I always have her do my trading for me. And she's also a great scavenger. Um, so here we are, we're on day 8 right now, and she says, we need to make sure we can defend our shelter, otherwise we are done for. Yeah, that's about the third time we've been attacked in the night. We don't have any weapons, I don't think. I think we have one shovel that we might have used as a weapon. Um, other than that, we're going to have to get um, something a little more effective to fight these, these bandits off. And I wish I could help Havli, he looks so hungry. Yes, everybody's hungry right now, but I think we may have some food. So let's, um, so hungry and sad. They started getting sad, I guess. I, they weren't sad yesterday. I'm not sure why they're sad today. Maybe because they're getting attacked in the middle of the night. 
So here's our whole shelter. We're all kind of spread out. We've got some beds here. Who's the hungriest? Pavle is very hungry. He's slightly hungry. Slightly wounded, and she's hungry and sad. Tired. We're going to put Katya down here. Uh, we're going to get her... Well, no, let's get her over here since she's right next to the water purifier. At least water collector, anyway. She's going to go ahead and... Oh, we can't collect because we don't have any, any more filters. Alright, so we're going to have her go make a filter before bed. And then we're going to stick her in bed so she can sleep. She normally sleeps during the day because she does a scavenging, you see. So now we're going to take Bruno, who is hungry and slightly wounded. Let's, uh... Oh, we have plenty of food here. So he's going to go eat. See, I made some food. Okay, now, oh, wait, right now, Katya is at the workshop, so now we have to decide what we want to make. We want to make these filters. Um, and now, this is our crafting menu on this simple workshop. We can upgrade this thing and make more complex items. But uh, right now, we just want to make one filter. And this takes a half an hour. And we can make one, and this shows you the materials that we need. So, you just find these basic components. That's all it is. Just a box. It looks like a bunch of crap in there. And uh, so you don't have to get too technical, which is nice. It's all kind of combined into one thing. Pavle is very hungry. We're going to send him down here to eat that canned food. So you have these sorts of locations in your shelter here. Oh. I have... Oh, wait a minute. Someone's here. I have no bad intentions. Baloney! Great. All right, Katya, she's got a knife. Let's bring her over here. This woman looks like she's hurt. So here's where you get these decisions here. There's a lot of moral decisions that you must make. Uh, and a lot of them could be a life or death, depending. Yours or maybe someone else's. So let's see what she has to say. We have better chances together. Can I stay? Oh, gosh. That means another mouth to feed. More materials to be used up, keeping her alive. Ay ay ay. All right, let's talk to her. Excuse me for this intrusion. I'm really embarrassed to ask this of you, but would you let me stay with you for some time? I can't go home. I tried to stay in my law office, but that area has recently become very dangerous. I really have nowhere to go. Just give me a sec, honey. Oh, boy. All right. That means... I mean, it could be helpful. It could be helpful because we could always use another body in here. Let me just pause it. We could use another person because that gives us, uh, you know, another able body who can go scavenging, who can craft, uh, who can maybe do some cooking and so forth and so on, um, particularly when people start getting hurt. Now, I haven't lost anyone yet, but I've seen other people do some Let's Plays, and dying is part of this game. All right, we're going to lose survivors, so I suppose, okay, we're going we're gonna to bring her along. Yes. What's your name? Amelia. Amelia, come on. Come on in. Good to find some friendly people. Now, this could cost us, this decision right here. This could cost us big time. Let's close that door. Is it closed? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Uh, because now we have to provide food for her. It was hard enough finding food for three. Now we've got to find food for four. And I'm going to just send Katya down here to go to sleep because she's going to scavenge at night. It's already 3 p.m. Time is compressed, obviously. It goes by pretty darn quickly. Um, so let's see what you can do, honey. Let's check your bio. She's tired. You just got here. She's tired. She's a coffee drinker. Two coffee drinkers. We don't have any way to make coffee, unfortunately. We're, our people are getting sad. We've got to get them happy somehow, and moonshine can make them happy. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and make this moonshine still, so we can give them something to do during the day. And raise their spirits. Uh, literally. Let's put this moonshine still right here. So that's pretty much how the crafting works. Kind of automatic. You don't have to wait for much. You just plop it down. But you do have to have the, the proper materials to make the item, of course. So uh, Bruno's just kind of hanging out here, sitting in the chair. He's slightly wounded. That ought to help him recover, resting. And now our water collector's collecting water. Oh, we can just go and move Pavle somewhere else. Pavle's going to go down and go to sleep. Slightly wounded. We still have one meal left. But we're about to go out, so there's really nothing we can do right now. Actually, I want to check this out. No, not you. Not you. Okay, let's just see. Before we go out, I want to see what this still can do. This is my first one. So we can make moonshine, but we need... We're going to need sugar. That's sugar. We're going to need some water and some fuel. Wow, it uses a lot of water, doesn't it? 
All right, here's where we go out into the night. And we can assign our civilians here, our survivors, what to do during the night. So we're going to choose our one scavenger who has... Uh, that's Katya. She's got a 12-slot backpack here. So we're going to send her out. She's still hungry, sad, and tired, but there's really no other option. I mean, we could send Amelia. She just got here. But her backpack's kind of small. Those two slots could be could be uh, hugely meaningful once you get out into the world, start scavenging around. You might want to have those two slots available. Um, now these two guys, we're going to have to have someone on guard. We'll put her on guard at the very least. And then these two guys will put sleep in bed. We have two beds. We might have to make a third here pretty soon. So now that I've assigned what everyone's going to do, we now have the option of picking and choosing where we want to send our scavenger. So I think this is where the random element is added to the game. Of course, your your survivors are random as well. I think there's maybe, well, I don't even want to guess, maybe 10, 12 different scavengers, I think, or survivors, rather, when you first start up the game, and it'll give you three right off the bat. And I think that's randomized. So now, a couple of these places were not here available to me from the get-go, but they become available over time. So now that we're on day eight, you can see I have gone out to the abandoned cottage a few times. I've gotten about 73% of what's there. Now, there's not much left. There's some meds and some parts, which we're not really interested in at the moment. The unfortunate part about the, the villa is that uh, there are people there. <laughs> um, I got chased out last time. I was sneaking around in the house, stealing some things, and um, someone saw me and they chased me out. And this is one of these decisions that you have to make. Do I sh should I go rob other people for our own benefit? Or should we try somewhere where there may not be any people? L let's just go back here because I kind of know it. And... Yeah, let's go back here because I have a little experience here. I'm going to bring the knife... And I'm thinking about... I'm going to leave the shovel back in the shelter. I think they can use that as a weapon if they get looted again. I should have tried to make another knife. But again, the days happen so fast. You just don't have a whole lot of time to prepare. Um, you have to be efficient. And you can kind of you know use everybody all at the same time. And keep them all working. But I think we're just going to bring the knife. The shovel is great for going to places that have a lot of rubble. I don't think this house is going to have a lot of rubble, so here we go. So now, again, this is kind of the side view angle. Uh, I just love this whole art style. It's very moody and depressing and gray. Now, you can look through all these points on the on the screen here that I haven't talked about yet. I just, they just give you... Um, interaction points. So this means that I can come over here and interact with this item, which is the door, and I can look through the peephole. So she's looking through. There's no one here right now. You can kind of see some movement occasionally, like a door open. You can hear some sounds. Um, you'll see where the sound is actually playing. You can hear audio, uh, like footsteps and so forth, and there'll be like little red, uh, little red motion sensor type beats. Here we go. Okay, so I can see her. The door's closed. You can't see me. I think it's closed. Yes. Because the action key here, the action button is open. So this is the woman that saw me last n night. And she ran upstairs to get Emil. Okay, there's her footsteps. Let's go. I'm gonna do this quick. I wanna run through. I don't think she can run. Can she run? Oh, yeah. Oh, we can run. But that makes a lot of noise. Oh! Oh, I should've looked first. That was dumb. Close the door. Quick, 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 quick. We're gonna go into the fridge. There's someone up here. That must be Emil. I think Emil is like the big man who lives here and he probably has a weapon. So we really need to be careful. Look at all the food. Look at all the food. These people are not sharing. They're not nice sharers. So I think we're gonna take... Uh, oh, wow. Look at the water. And what is this? Herb. Um... I don't really care too much about the sugar. Well, we can use it for trade. So... I'd like to leave a few spots because I'm not quite done looking here. Let's... Okay, let's leave that. This is so horrible. 
it really is that we're stealing from these poor people. <gasps> oh no. A meal. Alright, we got it. We should go. We got food. We got food for the night. I think I might just run. And you can hide. Oh gosh. There she is. Run. See? Someone's here. A meal. And she runs and she goes to get a meal, but I'm out of here. We're gone. That's it. We're good. I'm happy with that. I feel so terrible, but this is one of those decisions that you're going to have to make. Decisions have heavy consequences. Now, you know, clearly I'm trying to stay alive. I want to keep my survivors alive. I feel horrible stealing from that poor couple. But, hey, you got to do what you got to do to live, right? Um, and this night was calm. So we didn't get attacked through the night, which is nice. And Katya searched and found these things. Very nice. So they automatically go into our things. Katya, I know you're sad from stealing from those poor people. Have some moonshine, honey. There you go. Drink up. Salute. That'll make you feel... She feels a little better about it now. Who's going to drink with me? Alright, you go to sleep. Before you hurt yourself, climbing down these ladders all drunk. I'm going to get her down here to the metal workstation, see if we can't make a weapon. In the meantime, we're going to have uh, our cook here, Bruno, do some cooking. So, what do we have? We have a couple of different options for meals. We don't have any vegetables, so we can't make this double meal thing here. We want to make three meals, so let's make two fuel sources. That, that goes pretty quickly, in fact. So let's go ahead and have Bruno cook up three meals. We have this fourth meal here, and a couple raw food left over. And poor Bruno needs some, some bandaging, but I'm not sure what we're going to do with with him there. Here, you get over here. Because we don't have any bandages. Otherwise, we would have... It would show up here. In the medicine cabinet. Let's try going somewhere else tonight. I, I think, unfortunately... I think she's still drunk. I didn't realize they were going to be drunk for so long. Oh my gosh, she is. She can't even scavenge. Look at her. Kati is out cold. And... He's slightly wounded. He's very... Oh, she's very tired. <laughs> and he's slightly wounded. Well, he's not tired, so we're going to make you the scavenger. He's a fast runner, after all. All right, let's see what we have here. Sniper Junction. Yikes. We need supplies, and lots of it. Huge amounts of weapons and huge amounts of parts. Some food. Huge. Let's go to the school, because we have huge amounts of materials. Weapons and parts. Danger. Okay. Not so much danger here at the shelled school. The school has been shelled several times. Unfortunately, most of the cellars have collapsed, so it might be a good idea to bring a shovel and some other tools. It may, okay, yeah. There might be some homeless people in there, too, but I think that's where we're going to go. So who's our scavenger? Pavle. Slightly wounded. So he might be slower, but he's fast anyway, naturally, so that might help. Let's give him the shovel. It doesn't... You know what? We're going to leave the knife, then, for these guys to defend themselves, because he can fight with a shovel. And it's... You can see here it's got... Uh, it's degrading, so it does have a, a, a limited lifespan, unfortunately. We'll have to make another one when this one pops. I heard they had classes when the shelling starts. started. Poor kids. Horrible. War is horrible. So we're going to look in the window, in the peephole here. Don't see any movement. I don't hear any movement, so let's, let's go. Oh, I didn't give him the lockpicks, did I? Dang it. Arr, I should have given the lockpick too. Guys, you got to give him the lockpick. But we can always come back. Let's just see what we can get right here in the rubble and the desks and so forth. Uh, all right, we got some parts. Not too crazy about the electrical parts right now. They don't, we can't make anything electronic just yet. We can use it for trade, but I'm going to leave it there for the time being. I'd rather fill my pockets with more useful items right now. Let's check this pile of rubble. You can hear the shelling in the background. Grab all the wood. I'll take a peek here. Looks clear. There's something up here. Could be just a rat. Looks like we have something here too. Oh, this door has to be bu busted open. Which means I need a, uh, a crowbar or get around to the other side. Shucks. Alright. We don't have a crowbar. So, I guess we're going upstairs. I, this, I, I hear the footsteps. 
Okay, it's a rat. <laughs> Can I kill the dang rat? I'll eat it. There's some rubble. Let's rummage through this rubble here. Nothing. That's the first time I've ever found nothing. Okay, there's not, nothing up there. There's some rubble that we can dig through with a shovel. This is why I brought the shovel. This is great. Yes, yeah, so you can dig with your hands, but it just takes forever. I think that's that rat that's still down there. No biggie. Now, there's nothing there to grab. But we have to get through the rubble to get to the good stuff, probably. So let's see what happened through the night here. We were attacked. Again, we were attacked. They stole raw food. Oh, look at this. They took another canned food. They took a raw food, and they took a lot of our water. It was a band of hardened robbers. I think it's getting harder to stay alive here. Um, we had some weapons. We're going to have to make some weapons. Amelia's feeling much better. We just have to keep an eye on her. So it doesn't look like anybody was hurt. Yeah, no, nobody was wounded. The attackers walked off with many valuables. Yeah, they did. All right. Uh, how are we feeling today, Katya? A little hangover. She does have a hangover. Would you believe it? <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, boy. Pavle, I want you to go eat a meal and then hit the sack, my friend. You did a nice job. He looks a mess. Look at him. He can barely walk. So, we're going to put Pavle to bed. Go ahead. And the water is being collected. So Bruno, tired and slightly wounded and hungry. I think you're okay. Once you get some Z's, Bruno, before you collapse on the floor. Look at him. He's walking like a zombie. He's got a melee here. He's a talented lawyer. That'll come in handy. Oh, who's this? Oh, stuff to exchange. Katya, you're up. Go get the door. Right click is run. I wonder if that makes him tireder. No, 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 stop. I was kidding. Yes, someone was knocking Amelia. You can just stand guard. Have a look what I brought. <laughs> All right, let's see. So now we get to do some trading. So we have our things and his things. And some of his things are really expensive. And it gives you kind of an idea down here with this little quip. You'd have to show me a lot in exchange. That means it's expensive. He's, if he says it's common, you can have it for almost nothing then yeah literally you can just do like a one for one trade this is very simple you put what you want to give him down here and uh, what you want from him over here and then he'll tell you if he'll do it or not if the trade's fair this is franco by the way that won't do try hard okay let's get rid of one of those fine we have a deal i think that's good i hate trading for these parts to be honest because we can get those but we need that crowbar so, we're going to have to make this deal, and the food is great. Let's make that deal, Franco. She's a good bargainer. No question. Uh, no, you're free to go. Thank you. See you next time. I hope not. That would be terrible if you got sniped. Goodbye. Awesome. Okay. Go make crowbar. Quick, 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 quick. Run! Forget your dang hangover. Shouldn't be drinking so much. Wow! Nice moves, Katya. All right, guys. It's now day 14, and we're in some pretty dire straits. We were once again attacked in the middle of the night, and Pavle was severely wounded while defending our shelter from the robbers. And you can see here, he says, we need ba bandages badly. And Amelia also took a pretty good hit. She's wounded, and she says that she will die without bandages. Help me. And, uh, of course, Katya feels... Like, she's the only one, well, she is the only one that's not wounded, so it's up to her to get some bandages for her friends. So we're going to try to do that today before we call it quits with this video. Uh, before we do that, let's take a look at our herbal workshop. So this is one thing that we can, we can actually craft and use to produce our own medical supplies, or at least bandages anyway. But unfortunately, we don't have the ingredients. So we're out... Or, well, we don't have enough components, and we're out of uh, pure alcohol. So we're going to have to get some of that. And uh, this thing also provides uh, the ability to make cigarettes and tobacco and some other stuff. But that's really not important right now. So we have to get to a hospital, or at least a location that has some medical supplies in abundance. And uh, there is indeed a hospital. We're going to go there today. In fact, let's go right now. Poor Amelia is all sad. We have nothing to drink for you. 
Um, just sit in the chair. We don't even have another bed, and unfortunately, um, I don't even think we have the supplies to make another bed for her. No, we don't. Yeah, so, again, things are looking grim. We're going to end the day. And hopefully find some uh, some of the supplies we need to survive a few more days at the very least. I'm going to bring Katya. Even though she's tired, she's willing to uh, to go out and, and see if we can find some medical supplies here at the city hospital. So here we are. This is the hospital. It's still operating somewhat. We have a soldier here who's like, careful girl, I got my eye on you. Of course you do. So as long as we stay out of their personal belongings, they won't seem to mind. And this icon right here with a hand, that's a personal uh, desk. And if you go through there, you can look at stuff in there, you just can't take it out. They get upset. Now this is free for all, so I'm just gonna snag it. Just a pile of rubble, they don't seem to care about that. Now he's gonna have a sit down here. But I think we can get right past him. Hello! <laughs> is the doctor in? We got this patient here, he's unconscious, he shouldn't care too much if I go through the personal belongings, I don't think. It's terrible stealing from the hospital, but my friends come first. Uh, I really don't need the food. Well, I'll hang on to it until we find something better. Okay, there's a desk. Oh, oh. Oh, boy. Hold on. Nurse. Hi. That's a nurse. Yeah, I can't figure out what this woman does. Yes, everything's fine, really. How are you today? And see, she won't talk to me. I think if I were wounded, she maybe would give me some medical attention. So I suppose I could send one of my wounded survivors here and talk to her, and maybe maybe she would help. So that's an option. Oh, jeez. Oh, there's a guy right there in the chair. Hi. <laughs> uh, right. Sorry, didn't see you there. Let's just scoot by. And we have a patient. So not all the locations are populated with hostile survivors. Uh, you can find nice people out there, or even other scavengers that will um, pretty much leave you alone as long as you don't get in their way. Okay, here's the doc. Let's see if we can make a trade, doc. And he doesn't even have any bandages. What kind of doctor are you? You have cigarettes and a crowbar. <laughs> You're useless, Sandu. Seriously, no, I don't want to make a donation. I have nothing to give to you. Yeah, he's not even interested in my... The only thing he's interested in is the food, apparently. Well, good to know. I won't bring sugar next time. All right, we're going to go through this. Ah, bandages. I'll take the bandages. And... Oh. Oh. Uh, I'll leave the food. I'll leave the food. All right, so we have one bandage. So let's run to the exit, get back home to the shelter, and see what we can do to help our friends. All right, Katya is back. I brought the bandages. Now let's see that wound. Whew, she's pooped. Oh, no. Havle is bleeding. It looks like he won't make it. Bruno has a deep wound. These, these attacks are becoming far more furious than they were before. So we really need to get weapons. That's going to be the next thing. They didn't take anything, though, did they? Good. So they were able to defend the shelter and prevent any theft, but uh, unfortunately, we've got some bleeders. All right, pal. Um, let's give him some bandages. Can she... Oh, she can do this to him? Is that not awesome? So we could, like, force feed or something? What is this? She is sad after stealing. Oh, she is. She's going to dress his wound. There you go. So that'll make you feel better. That's the best I can do. Only one bandage. And have some food, too. Are you hungry? Pavel, you have to eat. Come on now. Down the hatch. There's a good boy. Eat the whole thing now. Alright. There you go, Nick. Lie down. Alright. Anyway, I think we're going to have to call it quits here, guys. This has gone on pretty long. You know what? Let's go see if we can't make another bandage. Go on, hobble on over there. Oh, no. Who this? Oh, wait a second. It's the lady with the kids. Oh, we need alcohol, and I don't know how to make pure alcohol. I guess we, maybe... Can we make that in our distiller? Um, Bruno. We get the door. 
So these kids came to our shelter the other day, said their mom was really sick, um, asked if we could bring her to the hospital. We did. We had uh, Bruno. Oh, here she is. Hi, I want to thank you. Bruno brought her to the hospital. Thank you for your help. I feel much better now. She's going to give us coffee. All right, Maya. It's Maya. Thank you, Maya. I will take your coffee. <laughs> of course I will. I mean, what the heck? I carried her to the hospital 18 blocks away. You're welcome, kid. So with that, guys, I think we're going to have to call it quits here. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Indie Game Test Drive. And once again, this is this war is mine. It's on Steam for $20 for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Check it out. All right, we'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.